This video is a response to several people who have written asking me when you should use dried herbs versus fresh herbs. While there is a simple general rule that you add fresh herbs at the end of cooking or as part of the plating, the topic is actually more complicated and it is something that I've never seen explained in any cookbook or video that was intended for the general public. The first thing that you have to know is that the flavor in each and every food is actually a blend of many different chemicals that are naturally present in those foods, just as herbs contain many different components. In music, we would call this a chord. Now here's where things begin to get a little more complicated. Each of the individual flavor molecules that make up that chord has different properties. The two properties that are important in cooking are the boiling point, or volatility, and the stability when heated, or that is how easily the molecule can react with other molecules that are around it when it's being cooked. Many flavor molecules decompose under presence of heat, and they turn into something that we simply don't taste as a flavor. Scientists use an instrument called a gas chromatograph to isolate individual flavor components in foods or herbs or just about anything else. This consists of a very long tube called a column that's formed into a coil in order to save counter space. A tiny droplet containing a mixture of unknown molecules is introduced at one end of the tube using a needle. Then a neutral gas blows through the tube pushing the droplet along the length of the column. Different molecules behave like runners in a marathon. The big ones tend to move slower and they emerge out of the other end of the column later than the small and more volatile molecules. Some flavor molecules have ionic attractions to the lining of the column that slows them down even further. But after a minute or so, molecules begin to exit out of the other end of the tube where they're detected electronically and a graph is drawn on a computer display to show how much of each substance is present. Of course, that doesn't tell us what substances are in the mixture. All we can tell from the gas chromatogram is how many different things are there and the relative proportions of each component. To figure out what the molecules actually are, another instrument called a mass spectrometer is connected to the output of the gas chromatograph. These two instruments are usually paired together and called GCMS, or Gas Chromatography Mass Spectrometry. Interpreting the results of the mass spectrometer's output requires an advanced knowledge of organic chemistry that's way beyond the scope of this short video, but suffice it to say that with GCMS we can know what is in almost anything and how much there is of it. The applications of this science are vast and far-reaching. There are a great many professional and academic books on this topic. The food manufacturing industry relies heavily on the science in order to manipulate flavors in snack foods and frozen packaged meals. One of the earliest applications was the wine industry. Red wines are now known to contain over a hundred different components that contribute to the flavor. Large-scale commercial wineries analyze samples from different batches of wine in order to determine how to blend them to achieve a consistent taste in every bottle year after year. But that's really another topic. On another side note here, one interesting discovery recently is that certain flavors we perceive are actually the result of enzymes in bacteria that live in our mouths reacting with the food. This is especially true for peppers and grapes, and without those bacteria, these things would taste completely different. By now you might be regretting having asked me this seemingly simple question about whether to use fresh or dried herbs. As I said early on in this video, the question is more complicated than it seems. Different herbs respond to drying differently. In the drying process, you're altering the balance of those flavor compounds. Highly volatile oils are largely or even entirely lost, but that's not always a bad thing, depending on what it is that you're making in the overall balance of the dish. For instance, most knowledgeable chefs know that dried tarragon is actually better than fresh tarragon for making sauce bernays, because the volatile oils that are lost during the drying process of those herbs actually would produce an odd taste in the final sauce but this is an exception. Some dried herbs are very similar to their fresh counterparts, especially woody herbs like thyme and rosemary. While basil is notoriously poor in the dried form because much of the flavor is in those volatile oils that vaporize during the drying process. Spices don't tend to suffer from this problem as much as long as they're stored properly and not too old, although freshly ground spices are always the best choice for the exact same reason. The volatile flavor components are retained. 
So the short answer to the question of whether to use dried or fresh herbs is that about 99% of the time you really can't go wrong with fresh, but fresh herbs are not always available year-round and much more expensive than dried unless you happen to have your own herb garden in a greenhouse. If you're adding herbs to a pot of something that's going to be cooked without a lid, just stick to dried herbs. Finish the dish off with a few leaves or sprigs of fresh herbs to liven the flavor back up. This gives you the background notes of those flavors at an affordable price, but you'll still have the high notes of those flavor cord from the sprigs of freshly picked herbs that you put on top.